Bhagavad Gita, verse 4.42. Therefore, O descendant of Bharata, with the sword of knowledge, slash the doubts in your heart, which are born of ignorance. Take shelter of Nishkama Karma Yoga and prepare for battle. Sar Ardhavashini Sri Bhagavan concludes this chapter with this verse beginning with Tasmat. Rit Sta refers to cutting the doubt in the heart. Yoga means taking shelter of Nishkama Karma Yoga and Atishta means be ready for the battle. Of all the processes recommended for attaining liberation, Transcendental knowledge is glorified here, and Nishkama Karma is the only means to attain transcendental knowledge. This is the essence of this chapter. Thus ends the Bhav Anuvad of Srila Vishwanath Chakavarti Thakur's Sar Ardhavarshanitika, the commentary that gives pleasure to the devotees and is accepted by all saintly persons on the fourth chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Sar Ardhavashni Prakashi Kariti Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, This chapter gives instructions on two divisions of the eternal yoga system. The first is the Jada Dravyamaya division, which consists of the sacrifice of material possessions. The second is the Atma, Yatatma, Rupa, Jinmaya division, or knowledge of the Self and of Bhagavan. When the Jada Ravyamaya division is performed separately, it simply becomes Karma. Those who are bound in this division are known as Karma Jada, deeply engrossed in mundane enjoyment. However, those who perform Jada Karma, materialistic action, with the sole purpose of attaining spiritual advancement, are properly situated, or Yukta. When we specifically deliberate on the true nature of spiritual activities, we understand that there are two aspects. One is knowledge of the fundamental principle of the living entity, Jiva Tattva, and the other is knowledge of the fundamental principles regarding the Supreme Lord, Bhagavad Tattva. Only those who experience and realize Bhagavad Tattva attain the essence of knowledge of the real nature of the Self, which is to be Sri Krishna's servant. This experience is perfected by realization of the transcendental birth and activities of Bhagavan and of the Jiva's eternal association with him, as described in the beginning of this chapter. Bhagavan himself is the first instructor of this eternal Dharma. Because the Jiva has become bound to inert matter by the defect of his own intelligence, Bhagavan descends by the prowess of his own knowledge potency, or Chit Shakti, and by giving instruction on the fundamental truth of himself, he makes the Jiva eligible to participate in his pastimes. Those who say that the body, birth and activities of Bhagavan are products of the deluding potency Maya are extremely foolish. People attain me according to the decree of purity with which they worship me. All the activities of the karma yogis are called yagya or sacrifice. The various types of yagya in this world, such as daiva yagya, brahmacharya yagya, grihameda yagya, samyama yagya, Astanga Yoga Yagya, Tapo Yagya, Dravya Yagya, Svadhyaya Yagya, and Varun Ashram Yagya all constitute karma. The only useful factor 
that is to be thought after in all these yagyas is the conscious part, knowledge of the real nature of the soul. Doubt is the greatest enemy of this knowledge. A person who is endowed with fate and who takes instructions on this knowledge from one who is fully conversant with tattva, realizes the self and can dispel all doubts. As long as one has affinity for the material world, one should take shelter of Nishkama Karma Yoga in order to achieve the stage of self-realization. Thus ends the Sar Ardhavarshini Prakashika Riti by Sri Srimad Bhaktivedanta Narayana Goswami Maharaja on the fourth chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita.